everyone, and sorry for the small delay due to some small technical issues. Really glad to welcome you to this great session, which is transforming to omnichannel customer experience engagement, human versus machine. Today, we have uh, three great speakers. First of all, we have uh, Rusty coming from overseas. Hi, Rusty. How are you? Good afternoon. Fantastic. We have Panos from Roche. S very same question to you, Panos. Hello, everyone. And Stefano from Bergen, Ingelheim. Stefano, hope you're doing well as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dario. Fantastic. So let's deep dive into the discussion with a small delay. Uh, my first question to you would be, what should be the key barriers to transform to omnichannel engagement models and how to overcome them so that customers' expectations are aligned? I suggest maybe we can start with you, Pano, since Roche is really doing a tremendous a transformation journey and it's very well known for that, for a great customer experience. Thank you. Thank you for that. Right. So I think that uh, we are we are indeed at Roche really investing in trying to not only get on the omni-channel journey, but also try to kind of leapfrog what we have been doing ourselves for a while now. And that's not easy, right? Because first, I think, and to your point, we need to challenge our own mindset, our own beliefs, our own readiness to actually uh, jump on something like this. So in, in what we see across the world is the fact that first we need to start thinking about are we really there? Are we really to start thinking differently? Are we ready to not only embrace an omnichannel mindset, but put it as a centerpiece of our uh, broadly not only launches, but communications uh, with our customers, with our, with our patients, with the whole world, right? So, and how can that be the main aspect and not an add-on, if you will, not something that we just kind of, by the way, you need to do this as well, right? So, so that's, that's where we're trying to get to. And I'd really love to hear from Rusty uh, and Steph, I know their own perspectives as well on this topic. Sure. Happy to jump in. Uh, hopefully you guys can hear me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so it's morning here in California. Apologize. It's a little early, but, uh, I, this is an interesting question. You know, you think about the barriers to omnichannel. Uh, I think probably the biggest barrier is budget and thinking about how you're going to deploy that budget across all the different channels um, and then measuring what comes out of those experiments that you run. Because omnichannel, by definition, is running uh, you know, against all these different personas in all these different ways. And I think convincing uh, you know, management, you know, especially from a marketing perspective, that budget is needed and then how you're going to measure that out over the time that is by far the biggest barrier to omnichannel because different personas are going to react to different channels in different ways and then you're gonna to have to really each company will have to dig in and figure out right i mean roche you're selling to scientists but you're also selling to doctors you're selling to healthcare providers each one of those is going to be in different channels and, and how you maximize those with the budget that you have i think is the biggest barrier and that's a start for us to stefano yes uh, dario thank you uh, if you want to talk about omnichannel customer experience engagement in pharma companies, I think we are most referring to ACPs and we still need to understand how to bring this to the patient. But if we want to transform to omnichannel engagement model, an answer to your question, three are probably the main pillars and relative potential barrier we need to overcome. First one, the customer centricity. So evolve from a product perspective to put really the customer at the center of our activities to provide a tailored content and solution in personalized way according to their needs. But on internal perspective, we know it's a huge challenge in pharma, the production and delivery of contents in personalized way. So there is no way out on what has been said several times during the previous session to streamline processes, leverage modular contents, develop content tagging capability, increase marketing automation and move in adopting AI. Then integrate data from voice of the customer to listen more directly and even more promote external collaboration. So involving more actively the customer through communities to start co-creating contents and services that really answer their needs. Then move from a multi-channel to an omni-channel perspective. So as farmers, we are still in the phase where we want to adopt AI and machine learning, but we need to start understanding how we can leverage this. Now we see more the challenge of technology, so data integration between platform and working to better integrate face-to-face -face and digital channel, 
and facilitate the adoption of marketing automation to better increase the funnel view. And mm -hmm. finally, the most important one, develop a data-driven company culture. So move in selling the value of data-driven decision-making and automation as a source of producing and managing data. To make this happen, we need first to make data easy to understand and accessible to all the organization, upskill the capabilities of the marketeers to set specific targets and KPIs, to test and learn and continuously improve the omnichannel activities. Then we know that the human role of rep is the most effective one in omnichannel engagement to improve the adoption ladder. In this case, we need first to develop their data-driven capabilities to make them understand the real benefits and then face the challenge of the change management to overcome the fear of automation. So keeping personal relationship and decision making in the center of engagement strategy. Fantastic. Thanks a lot. Bart, you also same question for you, which is uh, what are the key barriers to this omnichannel transformation journey that you find and lift the customer experience? Hey, Dario, thanks. Um, so I think, you know, the main barriers, if I just look um, really broad, uh, one, I think it is uh, a little bit of expectation, um, clarity on what do companies specifically expect from the omnichannel uh, focus, right? Um, and how do you translate that? Is it Rx Lift? Is it, you know, certain KPIs around engagement? Um, and I think that's not clear in the organization. And that's because various levels and types of roles across companies have varying levels of understanding of omnichannel, right? Right from the leadership to the folks actually working in the area. So I think one is just having a shared definition and expectation of success from this. Second, I do think that, you know, it, it, we all talk about sort of the technology, the connectedness of it, having the right systems and omnichannel cannot be done um, in offline mode. It needs a connected infrastructure, right? You need to always be looking at what's happening to customers. You want to be able to respond in as much real time as possible in healthcare. Um, but that foundation is critical. If the data is not all connected, right? That like omnichannel becomes very difficult. And then third, I would say it is sort of going too broad too quickly, right? If you try to solve everything, you will solve nothing. So maybe sticking with a brand sticking with a specific objective, uh, focusing on it because you can't solve every infrastructure, every process and every kind of uh, marketing challenge for the entire company all at once. So maybe start small, dream big. Thanks a lot, Barbie. Next question, how to adopt a modern pharma company to a technology ecosystem where customer experience is the driver for any kind of engagement? So anything what we do, should be with a clear vision of proper customer experience and personal relation. And maybe we can start this time with you, perhaps. I'm sorry, who did you say start with? Panos, can we start with you, please? Yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> um, great. So um, I'm thinking first, if we, if we want to have, I really like the comments that the other speakers actually spoke of, right? So you need to have like a technology integrated infrastructure. You need to be able to pick up data points from different systems, different touch points that HCPs actually use and leverage. And these need to actually talk to one another, be harmonized and generate insights, meaningful insights that it's and not for us, right? Not for the digital folk, if you will. This is for the people that are actually leading the brands in the markets, in the affiliates that know the customers, they need to be able to not only leverage the insights, but also make them part of their normal day to day routine, if you will. Right. So it shouldn't be that we speak of omnichannel as um, something that is is new uh, and something that uh, we we actually do on top of everything else, if you will. Right. So it should be something that um, we ourselves are experiencing everywhere else in other industries uh, daily, right? So uh, the moment we start kind of interacting with our customers within our own remit and our scope, when we're launching, when we're actually talking to them and so forth, we still kind of roll back into our normal, uh, usual ways of actually um, working with them, right? So how can we take the, these data points? How can we use them? How can we take 
the, the tech enabled stack, the data enabled stack, generate insights, meaningful insights to drive not only our budgets, our attention, but also our key messaging to where it makes the most sense. So that, that's the way we, we need to start thinking more and more. And those are the ways that we start to think about what um, a seamless end to end experience internally and externally would look like. Right. So that's more or less uh, kind of my take on it. Certainly. Seamless is certainly the keyword, right? Barty, let's continue. Yeah. So I think customer experience, I would look at it in two ways. One is the most sort of obvious part of customer experience is it is the company actually measuring it, right? A, a, lot, of, a lot of folks in healthcare are not, um, which means you have a real customer experience program that surveys customers directly, not through market research and blinded, right? But are you actually asking your customers, whether it's HCPs or patients, what is the customer experience and some of the, the standard KPIs that there are in, in um, you know, other industries, right? So that's number one. Do you just even have a CX program? And if you do, then what are the insights from the CX program? And how often do you action it? And then what is the operational and process lift required for someone in the organization to action it. It could be either reps, it could be through the call center, maybe there's an outreach back, um, but the folks connected most closely to the customer, do, do you have the processes in place to actually action it, right? That's the most important. Um, so that's just around the CX program. Um, the second thing around CX, I would say in, is how marketing is changing and you know i think there are different schools of thought right in in some schools of thought cx and marketing is just the same thing um you know if you if you're a good marketer you have a customer experience lens in everything you do in all of your channels your tactics campaigns there's another school of thought that says well yes there is marketing which is more channel centric but cx really infuses how you think about the customers in everything you do. Um, so regardless of that, I think inspecting the marketing processes to see, are we still very channel organized? Are we still looking at, okay, email channel, right? Sending out emails to customers one day a week, two days a week, uh, home office campaigns, then you have rep campaigns. Are you looking at them in silos? Or are these actually connected and they build on each other? Um, and is, is it actually built from a customer experience lens of how many touch points is one customer getting just from you know, the organization and from all the different departments of the organization? So it just starts to sort of change how you market, the fundamentals of marketing to be even market research, right? Very channel specific to truly trying to create experience and experience journeys. Thanks, Arvati. Rasti, let's continue with you. Well, uh, to be fair, I'm not a uh, life sciences marketer. So, uh, you know, because I come from Software Planet. So, but I do have a PhD in biochemistry. So I guess I qualify in some ways. Uh, my only thing is I would say this. I mean, I think I would echo what, what Panos and Barty just said. Uh, get your baseline first. Think of this as, a, as you're going to run a bunch of small experiments to figure out what works. If you don't have your baseline, customer experience in Barty's case, or, or what you're already doing, it's not something that what Pano said. I don't think, I think it's very hard to measure what impact on a channel has. So that's how I would get started. Figure out your baseline. What are you doing today? Thanks a lot. And Stefano. Yeah, I think uh, regarding customer experience uh, is still about uh, the real value, I mean, uh, of the machine learning and to work together in a cross-functional way. So if you're looking at sales, marketing and medical affairs team as one company. So to listen and learning from the data in anticipating potential trend or structural issue to timely improve the contents or designing specific services to continue to improve company channel engagement strategies with the ultimate goal to offer the best customer experience and to be more competitive in the market. Thanks a lot. And last question, which is what is the purpose of AI and machine learning in pharmacy engagement model or how quickly can we implement other technologies to align with existing legacy solutions? 
let's start this time with you, Rasti. I think you can also give a good uh, point of view on that because you're actually coming from a solution vendor, right? Integrated solution. Yes, yeah, 100%. Yeah, we are, we are a solution provider of both AI and machine learning uh, across the space. Uh, I mean, for me, the purpose of machine learning AI is pretty simple. It's to uncover insights that human minds can't um, because of the sheer vastness of the data that's, set, that's involved. Um, so speed to getting AI up and running or machine learning up and running uh, depends on having great data, uh, having that data in a way that uh, algorithms and machines can access it and having lots of data. So I think, you know, medical device companies and, and, and healthcare provider companies and you guys need to all be gathering data and ensuring that the systems that you have are collecting data in a way that machines can actually go and work on it. So, you know, the companies that get that right are going to leap ahead of their competitors because the data is so important and it is a, a linear fashion that machines learn. Thank you. Stefano? I think in a pharma engagement model, the purpose of AI machine learning is absolutely not to replace the human role but to support, for example, the rep in dealing and getting the support in automatizing lower added values activities to better increase the funnel view and provide the best customer experience for ACP. Make them the human role, of course, to stay and put at the center of engagement activities. So to enable the rep as a real orchestrator, so allowing him leveraging all the data coming from channel engagement content performance and customer feedback perspective to foster the insight collection of the preference of the customer and to focus more actively on empathic listening to better satisfy customer needs during the call. And through the support, of course, of AI and machine learning, it suggests what is the best next action in predictive mode to anticipate what are the, the future needs and effectively support to implement the close the loop. Um, yeah, I think that um, I think this there's, there's two things. So one, I agree with Stefano that, um, you know, in the sales channel, um, AI can actually help um, the reps be more effective and have effective conversations and direct them to where there will be value faster. Um, Otherwise, you know, the whole sales process is is very, um, it's not targeted and personalized enough, right? So driving more and more personalization in sales. The other area where um, machine learning AI can help greatly is we have a lot of data um, that in healthcare, it's, there's a lot of data, there's no dearth of data, um, but it's not connected, it's dirty data, and there's a lot of noise. So if there are ways to improve productivity for insight generation, speed to insight from, you know, what is the hypothesis of the question to what is the answer? And then what is the action that you're going to take as a result of that? Um, I think there's great efficiencies to uh, really drive personalization, targeting, and making sure that the marketing dollar is spent wisely, right? So uh, more and more. Thank you. And Panos, now last one. <laughs> hey, great points, great points. Uh, fully agree with all the points, right? So I think for me also the other part that we have is being able to leverage AI and machine learning in a very pragmatic way, right? So when you demystify it, you think, okay, what can really come back from it? And I think that it's, it's like having someone telling you, you know what? You haven't seen this. There's also an insight um, in a completely different uh, universe of data or, or touch points that perhaps we haven't realized, right? So because we're still kind of trying to acknowledge all this information and consume it um, in a pace that we have been doing for a while. Machine learning and AI can actually do this across multitudes, in depths, and actually cross uh, referencing and leveraging insights from multiple data sets at the same time. So the insights that can actually be driven at that point can be leveraged not only for us to kind of showcase where we should be focusing more and how we, we, we should actually bring more attention, where we're actually spending more money, but also how can we increase customer experience as a whole? I think AI and machine learning, once we kind of go through the early phases and uh, the baby kind of uh, steps of uh, connecting the data, uh, harmonizing it, and so forth. 
will really help us and differentiate us, if you will, from the way that we have been doing business uh, and the way we have been actually conducting uh, and working with our brands and our HCPs in the past, right? So I think that would actually really catalyze and expedite uh, ourselves into our future omni-channel customer experience. Thank you. We are left with three minutes and uh, there is one very critical aspect which we discussed a lot to, today. And this is the alignment within technology and the people right, within the organization. So if you ask me, I would say once this is aligned, this is certainly the, the first step into delivering customer experience. How do you see actually that even today we have this, this great barrier between aligning humans within the organization internally together with the technology? Maybe Barty, you can start with, with this one. What are the barriers you said, Dario? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, you know, I think it's a question of focus, to be honest, because even the technology organizations these days, there's just so much to do, right? From depending on the maturity of the organization, they might still be dealing with legacy systems. They might be looking at how data management is done better, faster, and they have to look at channels and marketing platforms. And so I think it depends on the maturity of the organization in one driving the journey to the cloud. Second, how much of the technology um, landscape is still sort of legacy versus versus where they are in that roadmap of modernization. And then you add omnichannel and CX on top, right? Um, so the foundation really has to be built step by step. And I, I don't know if it's an alignment problem or it's a investment focus prioritization problem. Um, you know, too much to do, and and this being another uh, another focus area, which by the way is so broad, so big that how do you chunk it up into meaningful progress? Okay, Rusty, how do you see that problem when implementing? Oh, I think Marty just nailed it. I don't, I can't add much more to that. It comes to what you've got already in house, and then what what can you add to it that makes sense, and who's got time to do it? Yeah, uh, I think yeah. a lot of people buy these platforms and, and I sell these platforms, so I totally get it. And, and the next thing you know, they're trying to figure out how to implement it and with no budget and no people and no time with not not thinking about the integrations and things need, that need to happen first to capture the data. So figure out what you want to solve for first, then buy the technology. That's what I always say. Exactly. Good point. Panos? Yeah, so I uh, love that point, right? So I think this goes back to the original point about uh, the challenges. And this really talks to the point about our mindset. It's, I, I don't think that technology is a problem anymore, right? So I think there's a wealth and an abundance of solutions and kind of ecosystem of solutions that one can actually use. Um, it's us feeling more confident with it. It's us being ready to leverage it and our customers learning that we are actually having a, a differentiated value prop for them. Uh, and we really want, I think, this really speaks to the point that all pharma companies actually want to get and increase their overall customer experience and have a much better view, not only of the way that they work with HCPs, but also of the overall value that they bring to their patients in total, right? So because that's what we're doing it for at the end of the day. So I think that um, that's us kind of uh, learning to work differently and kind of building on that on that new mindset, if you will. Thank you. And Stefano, last words. For me, the highest barrier is the change management, the cultural shift. We already talked to the previous panel session. And of course, uh, we need to be authentic. So everything is on communication and trust. So we need to share the why behind this changing to face the more rational barrier and to support in emotional way to, for example, make them experience the rep and touch with their hand the multi-channel tool. Keep this simple, so simplify, have a common company language, involving all the people in a cross-functional way, so the internal stakeholder, including the rep, to be very pragmatic and to build starting from the needs of the field. And then, of course, also engage the leaders uh, to make understand what should be the new uh, behavior requested. And also, finally, I think uh, we had to make uh, this uh, the adoption of fun. So this is important also to, to do it. Thanks a lot. <clears throat> With that final words, I would like to thank you. Barty, Rusty, Panos, and Stefano. It was a great discussion. Looking to the next one and have a nice rest of the day. Thank you. Thanks thank you, Dario, and everyone. Bye-bye.